So I am doing a cocktail called the Sake Tini, uh, and that's from uh, Sam's boyfriend's book. It's a uh, Dale DeGroff, <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> the true. craft of the cocktail. <laughs> uh, sorry, Rick. Um, <laughs> it's fine. I know my boy. You're her husband. <laughs> I have many boyfriends so, and girlfriends. So I'm going to do, uh, I used the botanist uh, gin here. It's a very, very floral kind of, kind of, as far as body goes, it's, it's kind of a light body gin. I was tasting it earlier. So I'm going to do two and a half ounces of the botanist. Here's all's laugh in the background. Still cracks me up. Adds to the... Yeah. Ambiance. Authenticity. <laughs> so I've got dry curacao here. Uh, you know, I feel like anyone who's really into cocktails probably knows about it, but when you think of curacao, maybe you think of blue curacao, which is curacao is an island, uh, and they grow all these oranges that are basically inedible. Uh, think like Normandy apples or crab apples. Like you can't actually eat them, but uh, they found that if you ferment them and make a distillate, it's actually quite nice. How much of that? So I've got a quarter ounce of the dry curacao, and and then I'm going to use the uh, Hakutsura uh, Junmai Sake. Uh, I love sake on its own uh, or as a cocktail ingredient. Um, if you're going to try and get into sake, I recommend uh, maybe try the different tiers. Uh, you know, they mill the rice down to get to, to, get to the, the, the pure starch. Um, and the different levels, you're, you're gonna get a lot of variation out of them. Uh, Junmai is kind of like the entry level. Uh, this will be milled down about 30%, uh, or at least 30%, I should say. Uh, you get into the higher levels like uh, uh, Daiginjo sakes uh, are milled 50% or more, uh, so the quality just comes from that, but not to say that that's it's all preferential, of course. Mm. Uh, and I'm kind of doing this because, you know, uh, you know, your vermouth is just a, a, a wine, a, for, a fortified wine, or a, so sake is a, a good alternative in any cocktail. I would recommend any cocktail that calls for vermouth to try it with sake. When you say vermouth, do you mean like super vermouth, dry vermouth? I mean dry vermouth, are, vermouth okay. because because in this particular case, sake, your sakes are always going to be dry, with the exception of uh, some of the unfiltered sakes, which do have some residual sugar. But for the most part, sake is dry. I'm gonna give that a stir. One of the other reasons I went with the botanist is because it's overproof. And I think it just stands up in a cocktail a little nicer. And I'm using a rocks glass because that's what I had. And none of that shit actually matters. <laughs> Red wine glasses and rocks glasses. Yeah. That's all you need. <laughs> That's right. It's a very unique, uh, unique recipe there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What do you think? The sake doesn't 100%. I mean, you can definitely taste the dry curacao. Mm. That's the really sake interesting. The sake is just kind of like.
It's a little bit there. It hits finishes you. sake. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Wow. Sake is is kind of like a. It's got it's an almondy finish. Butter, yeah, buttery. Like uh, it's it's more of a textural thing than mm -hmm. than than anything. Hmm. What would you say would be some of the uh, flavors of that sake in particular? I feel like it's very, sorry to interrupt, the sake is like very prevalent on the nose. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say it's definitely like got this buttery thing going on. Um, I'm going to give this glass a quick rinse because it's been filled with gin. Uh, this is, by the way, this particular sake, you can, you can, anything that we're talking about, you can buy locally at, at any of your local, local shops. Like for us, it's been 51. I go there, get... 10% off on six bottles or more, which is cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, that includes spirits. So moving into moving into summer, you know, for your for your half mm -hmm. case of gin, which I'll go through mowing the grass, drinking gin and tonics. <laughs> also, uh, notice, is it the curacao that gives it the thicker kind of acidic, awesome? Yeah, it's got a it's, bit of sugar, it's but syrupy. It's, yeah, it's it definitely good way. you're going to get a Not too massive much. texture component off of that and yeah. also off of the sake. I mean, if you taste this by itself, it's very heavy. Uh -huh. um, it's it's almost very like buttery on the nose. Uh, Ooh, that's really good one. And then it f like has this crazy like, I don't know, It's, it's I want to say like a crispness, like, uh, yeah. you know, it's I don't really weird. For, for it makes you want to take another good. drink. For it sure. makes you keep yeah. coming back. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Who's ever only had the uh, sake that they serve hot at like a you know sushi place that's mm -hmm. you know bulk and it comes out of a tap and it's yeah. not good? <laughs> uh, you owe it to yourself to like try some good sake because it's. Uh, I always thought I hated it until I actually had some like real deal stuff mm. and it's it's a pretty amazing product. It's yeah. hmm. it's delicious. Awesome. Yeah, for but sure. Yeah, it's, for yeah, sure, a good terrible. starting point would be you know spend thirty bucks get a, especially if you're a wine drinker. Uh, get a nice bottle of Junmai Daiginjo, uh, which just means it's milled to a certain point, uh, and with the Junmai preference on Daiginjo, and I could I could be wrong, but it, uh, it means that there's no, it's unfortified, there's no spirits added to it. So it's very expressive, uh, and th you know, there's a lot to know about sake. I don't know shit about it, so, so I'm kind of just talking out my ass right now but but I really like sake and I and I want it to be a thing uh, both in in cocktail and also for for the wine enthusiasts that, that go out to eat and say well what what wine would go really well with this well you know I can think of wines that would go really well with this but they might be absurdly expensive uh, but this bottle of sake is also going to go really well with this yeah. and, and not be Quite so, quite so much. Glenn, um, why did you choose the Pierre Ferrand dry curacao too? I just kind of—I feel like that's notable because that stuff is pretty. Oh, versatile. for largely because it's readily available, uh, but I feel like it's it's the probably the most true to form uh, when it Absolutely. comes to like throwback, you know, throwback yeah. uh, spirits. Uh, they they really like, you know, thinking. Thinking of Curacao as as a place and and where the origins of of Curacao came from and and, and, and it's just the best like cocktail of, ingredient that's mm -hmm. orange. Maybe yeah. you search into that. And it's a very like true to like you said, very true to that time period of what they right. were using in cocktails. Yeah, it's a good all-purpose one. I think mm -hmm. I find that like. You know, every, there's Cointreau, there's Triple Sec, there's all all different uh, manner of things out there, and to me, that's like. It's it's not very expensive, and it's you know like you said now it's readily available these days, and I just I find like you can pretty much use that as your all-purpose orange liqueur, and it, and it works really well. So yeah, awesome. the, the price point's always good, and Pierre Ferrand, uh, being traditionally a, a cognac distiller, uh, those guys literally like write the book on cognac distillation too. They're the ones that convene every year and decide what cognac is, and that being a nice uh, nice cognac-based spirit from them shows the amount that they care and what they're making. And they're a bunch of fun guys, too. Cool. Like mushrooms? Yep. Cool. <laughs> All right. Good cocktail. 